The examination of the chest x-ray is a very useful tool, um, one that needs to be added to anybody's armoury when looking after the sick patient. Um, and this uh, presentation hopefully will give you the structure needed to examine one thoroughly and properly and hopefully identify any abnormalities that might be compromising your patient's well-being. A mnemonic is a useful way to approach um, the examination of the chest x-ray to make sure that you do it thoroughly and in a structured way. And hopefully if you do both those things, um, then you won't miss anything that might be very important. The mnemonic I use is essentially an A, B, C, D, E, F, G approach. Um, I do stick a T in at the start uh, for some of the technical aspects of the x-ray. Uh, but essentially A, B, C, D, E, F, G will get you through most chest x-rays. So some of the technical aspects to consider when looking at a chest x-ray. Firstly, you want to establish whether the film is actually rotated or not, i.e. Um, is the patient lying completely flat um, when the x-ray was taken, they haven't got one shoulder pulled through, they're not lying slightly to one side. The problem with that, if they were to be doing so, is that some of the structures then become difficult to interpret. Um, so it's important that they are as flat as they can be when taking the x-ray. How do you establish whether the film is um, rotated or not? Well, what essentially you do is look at the ends of the clavicles. So you're looking at the ends of the clavicles here and here and try and establish whether they're equidistant from the vertebral bodies or the trachea, which you can see here. So obviously there's a smaller gap here than there is here, which would um, indicate that this is a very slightly rotated film. So it may be difficult to interpret some of the features. For example, the mediastinum looks like it might be slightly enlarged, when in fact all you're doing is looking slightly round the back of it because of the rotation of the patient. The other thing you want to establish is how well penetrated the film is. Um, has the radiographer used the right settings and therefore given you a good picture? Uh, you need to see the vertebral bodies all the way through the heart, really, down to the diaphragm. If you can see them through the heart, um, then you've probably got a well-exposed um, x-ray. If you can't see the vertebral bodies at all, um, as in this picture here, um, then it's possibly that um, it is um, underexposed, um, and it's going to make some of these soft tissue areas hard to see. An overexposed x-ray uh, will look much darker, um, and that makes some of the bony features hard to interpret because you can't see the bone edges so clearly um, and it might make the lung fields look very much darker than they would otherwise. One of the important things you need to establish as well is whether the film is a PA or an AP. Um, and by PA we mean posterior anterior or anterior posterior. You can see from this diagram here that with a PA x-ray, which is the x-rays that most people have, um, down in the um, x-ray department is that they're asked to stand with the plate in front of them here, the x-ray plate, and the x-ray is then taken from behind them, um, from there to there. And obviously this then hits the heart slightly later than it would in the AP x-ray where the plate is placed behind the patient and the x-ray is taken from in front of them. And obviously you can see that this would make the heart shadow appear very slightly larger than it does in a PA x-ray. And the lesson from that basically is that one cannot really comment on the size of a patient's heart on an AP film as opposed to a PA film. One shouldn't try to comment. One of the markers you might see on an x-ray, um, they might very kindly have put AP or PA on the x-ray. If they haven't, one of the signs to tell whether it's a PA or an AP is whether you can actually see the scapula through the chest wall. If you can see the scapula, and then it's very likely to be an AP film because with a PA x-ray the patient is asked to move their shoulders up and their arms up to move the scapula out of the way to make it easier to interpret. So they're the technical aspects. But now we're going to move on to the A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H approach in interpreting the chest film. So with the airway, um, there's a number of features you want to be aware of with the airway, um, but the main thing is that is the trachea actually central, i.e. is it in the middle? Is it again, once again, between the two ends of these clavicles, is it equidistant? Um, so this isn't about whether the film is rotated, it's about whether the trachea is central. So why might the trachea not be central? Well, there's a couple of reasons why it might not be central. 
It could have been pushed across by, for example, a pneumothorax, which, with the air pressure in the pleural space, is pushing the trachea over to one side. Or it could be pulled across. If a lung becomes um, consolidated or collapsed, what tends to happen is that that collapsed lung then pulls the trachea across towards it. So you need to establish, is it being pushed or is it being pulled? Um, and that will give you some clues as to the condition that you might be dealing with. Simply put, that's the airway issue already resolved. Next we move on to B, which stands for bones. So you can see here there's obviously a, a lot of bony structures in the chest and you're wanting to identify them and to assess whether there's any obvious fractures or any possibility of any metastases within any of those bones. So you're going to be looking at the clavicles, you're going to be looking at the vertebral bodies, which you've already assessed to see how well exposed the film is. And one of the main things you want to be doing, um, as well as looking for fractures and metastases, is establishing how many ribs you can see. Um, on a normal, uh, normally expanded lung, um, in a patient who's fit and well and has no presence of any lung disease, you would expect to see six anterior or ten posterior ribs. The posterior ribs are the slightly more obvious ones, these ones here that run all the way down, and the anterior ribs are less obvious. But if you can count six anterior ribs and no more, then you've got a normally expanded lung. The patient with COPD tends to have, um, sometimes can have more ribs evident, um, and this gives you some clues that they've got a hyper-expanded lung. You're looking for fractures, like I said, um, and you, you might see evidence of fractures as in this chest x-ray here. So we then move on to C, which is for cardiac. And again, there are a number of features here you're looking for with um, the heart. Now, I do include the mediastinum a little bit here um, as far as C for cardiac is concerned. Uh, mediastinum does come up later when you examine the hilum. But if we talk about something that's a very good indicator of lung pathology, and that is what's called the silhouette sign. You can see the edges of the heart and the mediastinum should be nice and clear, as in this x-ray here. Um, the heart is silhouetted against the air in the lung um, and there's nothing obscuring that silhouette as is the diaphragm as you can see underneath. When you start to get lung disease you start to lose this silhouette sign and depending which lobe is affected will affect where the silhouette starts to vanish. You can see here for example we've got a right middle lobe opacity Okay, and opacity is often a word you want to use if you're not sure whether we're talking about consolidation, collapse Basically, just call it an opacity and say there's an opacity in the right middle lobe or the right middle zone if you're not clear which lobe is involved. And it's a loss of the silhouette sign here, so you can see that the heart border has gone here. Indeed, you can actually see the bronchus working its way down there. Um, so we've lost the silhouette sign of the heart border there. You can see again on this one here that we've started to lose the border of the heart up here because of this opacity up here. Same again on the left side, we've got a left lower lobe opacity down here, so you've lost the silhouette sign here, you can't see the heart border too clearly, and you've lost the diaphragm here as well, and we'll talk about that a little bit later. And on the left side again, you started to lose the silhouette sign, the mediastinum started to disappear behind whatever this is here. One also needs to assess the size of the heart. Um, when looking at the chest x-ray. I've already mentioned that uh, on a AP x-ray one can't really comment on this but if it is an AP x-ray basically you just want to make sure that the width of the heart is less than half the size of the thorax in total. Um, if it's any bigger than that then there possibly is a risk of um, or an element of cardiomegaly. The diaphragm is the next area, that's the D, so A, B, C, D. Um, and again the diaphragm should be nice and clear, the edges of it should be beautifully clear and you should be able to see the um, cardiophrenic angle which is this one here and the costophrenic angles which is here so here and here and they should be nice and clear, there should be a nice pointy shape to them um, with no obvious loss of that angle 
as one indeed can see in here with this right lower lobe opacity you've lost the diaphragm shape here and again on the left lower side as well so you need to make sure that it's nice and clear um, the left tends to be very slightly higher than the right and they should both have this almost tented appearance like there's a pole underneath them one thing that you don't want to see under a diaphragm um, is air under the diaphragm. The only place you should see air is the gastric bubble, which is this area here. Um, this is obviously air in the stomach. But anything like this, air under this diaphragm, the only way air gets under the diaphragm other than the gastric bubble is if there's been a perforation of the bowel to one degree or another. Um, and you can see there's a quite a fine line here which might also be air under the diaphragm. And it can be as subtle as this one sometimes. It's not always as obvious as this one here. But obviously if you're looking at a chest x-ray and you see air under the diaphragm, you're going to have a patient who is presenting with some of the signs that may suggest that air under the diaphragm is not a complete shock to you, so they might have an acute abdomen. E and F stands for equal lung fields. You should be able to see the lung markings here. You should be able to see this nice almost marbled effect throughout the lung. It shouldn't be dark as in here, which and this is a fairly obvious um, pneumothorax so this is obviously very much darker than this side and neither should it be very much whiter than the other side so they should be of equal translucency you may um, when you get some consolidation you may get some of these what we call air bronchograms so you can see here that some of the bronchi have been outlined by the consolidation that's surrounding them so you see these quite obvious airways and that can indicate that this is um, somebody who's got a consolidated lobe in their chest You want to check for, again, this loss of this silhouette sign. So you can see here this is a much lighter area than the rest of the lung um, and it would lead you to believe that there's some issue going on here. Um, and then you might also get the patient with a pulmonary edema. That tends to be bilateral fluffy deposits um, or opacities. So you can see both sides here as in this bat wing appearance. So it's both sides. And again, this patient's going to present with a lot of the symptoms that might suggest that they've got a pulmonary edema. So they're going to be tachycardic, they're going to be tachypnic, um, they're going to be suddenly breathless, they might have a known history of some degree of heart failure. Um, so this may not be a complete shock to you. And then finally, just to mention the gastric bubble again, which we've already talked about, but there you go, there's the gastric bubble, that's something that you would expect to see.